Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mitch here and today I'm doing a what's in my bag video for the gear that I take with me while I'm traveling. So I've been working as a full-time filmmaker now for the last six years and I've traveled to pretty much every corner of Australia as well as many overseas trips for both work and personal projects. And one question I get asked a lot, whether it's in the comments of these videos or on my Instagram, is what camera do you use and what lenses do you use? I've owned a lot of different pieces of equipment over the years and it's been a really fun process, you know, getting to know uh, what I like to use and what works for me. Um, and traveling in this job also presents a lot of unique challenges in, you know, really trying to get the best quality work while also not bringing an exhausting amount of gear um, and equipment that can really slow you down. So today I'm going to show you guys what's in my travel bag for photography and filmmaking. So let's jump right into it. So first off, I want to start with the bag that I'm using. So this is the Tenba Rodi 2. This bag is great because it's durable and compact and I love that it has wheels on it. Uh, it really takes the pressure off your back while you're running through airports and you know walking to and from your accommodation. Um, it also fits way more gear than a traditional backpack while also being small enough to fit in the carry-on compartment in the airplane. This bag can also convert into a backpack with the straps folding out of the top compartment um, but I've found that it's, it's great for short distances but because the base of this bag is built from really hard plastic, it isn't as comfortable as a dedicated backpack. So on every trip, I also bring a backpack. I use the Tenba Shootout um, and I pack it in my check luggage so that when I get to where I'm staying, I just take the gear out of the rolly bag and I pack a backpack with what I need specifically for that day. Sometimes you don't need all of your gear. All right, so in the very top compartment, here I have a couple of USB cables for my hard drives and a dongle attachment for my MacBook Pro. So this dongle attachment has a SD card reader as well as a micro SD as well as some uh, normal USB ports and then of course the USB-C ports. And it plugs into actually two, the two uh, USB-C ports on the side of the MacBook. My MacBook is the 15 inch MacBook Pro. Um, and this is the spec'd up version with the best possible CPU and GPU that I could get at the time as well as a 500 gigabyte SSD. I love this thing for editing 4K footage but I'm sorry Apple, I really can't stand the keyboard and the touch bar on this MacBook. So when I'm at home I use a mouse and an external uh, keyboard with a monitor. So guys, opening up the main compartment now and first up is my main workhorse camera, the 1DX Mark II. Now I've done a whole video on this camera and I'll link that video in the description below if you're interested in hearing me talk about why I love this camera. And attached to it is the Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens. This is my favorite lens. It's just a great walk around lens. Uh, it's really versatile which I love and it stays on my camera most of the time. So inside the camera I've got a 256 gigabyte CF card and a 128 gigabyte CFast card giving me a total of around 380 gigs of storage. Next up is the Fuji X-T2 and I absolutely love this camera for both stills and photography. Uh, it's a great complement to the 1DX2 and I really love the inbuilt time-lapse feature. It enables me to shoot a time-lapse you know, while I'm shooting elsewhere with the 1DX so it's great to have two bodies um, wherever I go. Um, and also have, you know, a compact option to take with me if I don't want to take the 1DX. Um, on the X-T2, I have the 18 to 55 millimeter lens. I love it so much. If you've seen my New Zealand video, I pretty much exclusively shot that entire video with this lens. I love the image stabilizer and the size and weight is amazing. Um, I've got a grip extension on the camera too, as it helps you grip onto it, um, as well as the little red shutter button because it looks cool. Um, in the bag, I actually cover it with this Velcro divider. Now, the reason that I do that is because I store the camera lens down to save a bit of space, and I really want to protect that rear screen from getting damaged. Next up is the DJI Mavic Air. It's a great drone, really compact size, just amazing. It folds together for easy storage, and it's just so easy to carry around, and it has a great image. You can record uh, up to 4K with this guy, but usually I just use the 1080p or the 2.7K options with this one. 
Next up is the GoPro Hero 5, which I have attached to this mini tripod here. And I use this for some underwater shots where I can't bring my underwater housing and for those point of view style shots. The mini tripod gives you a nice little handle um, as well as being able to flip out and capture some behind the scenes or even time lapses. The Mavic Air controller is the next piece of gear, comes with the Mavic Air and I love that just like the drone itself it folds down into a really compact form factor. You can even unscrew the little joysticks and store them under the phone mount. Uh, which just really helps keeping a small footprint. So here's the controller um, with my iPhone 7 Plus. So moving on to the lenses here, the Sigma 24 to 105 f4 Art OS is just my favorite general purpose lens. It can allow you to get beautiful wide angle shots as well as when you zoom into 105, it's a nice telephoto length for close ups and detail shots. The optical stabilizer really helps to eliminate camera shake when you're shooting at longer focal lengths. Um, this lens is perfect if you can only bring one lens with you out for the day and you want to get a large array of different shots. Next up is the massive but absolutely incredible Sigma Art 85mm 1.4. This lens produces beautiful background separation and bokeh as well as being super super sharp. I love it for nighttime shots and shots of people. The microphone that I bring with me is the Rode Video Micro. And I use this mic for recording atmosphere noise or if there's any interesting sounds that I want to capture. Um, I can also pair it with my field recorder to get some really high quality sound. It comes with a dead cat, which just slots over the mic like this, which helps remove the wind noise, which can really ruin your audio on a windy day. Next up is my absolute favorite lens for the X-T2, and that is the Miticon 35mm f0.95 lens. This is the equivalent of a 50mm lens in full frame terms and it's a fully manual lens with a clickless aperture. It is perfect for video, but I really love shooting photos with this lens too. I use it in extreme low light and occasionally for people shots, but I find it's just a really great general purpose lens too. I love the unique look of the shots that this lens produces. The hard drive that I bring with me is the Lacey Rugged Mini 4TB. This hard drive is great for travel as it is impact resistance and gives you some peace of mind you know that your footage isn't going to be lost um, as easy as it would with you know a normal desktop or portable hard drive. It has an outer rubber case that helps protect it from bumps and I chose the 4TB because after a week of shooting you can really start to fill up a 2 or 3TB drive especially when you're shooting in 4K. So fitting perfectly into this road case is my next item, which is the Roland DR-05. This is my primary field recorder for recording ambient sounds or effects for my films. If there's a sound of a waterfall or a running creek and I want to capture what it really sounded like at that location, I can use this to record amazing quality sound. It records to a normal SD card and I can even plug in my Rode mic on top as well if I choose not to use the built-in mics. It takes two AA batteries and they last a really long time, which I love. Next up is my headphones. These are the Audio-Technica ATH M50X. These are great for editing on the plane as they do cancel out a little bit of background noise. They also fold up into a really small form factor and they have a detachable cable too. And on top of that, they sound great too. These are some of my favorite headphones that I've ever owned. So that's it for the main compartment. Now moving on to the top pockets of the bag. I have a spare battery for my Mavic in the first pocket and in the next pocket, I also have another Mavic Air battery. I love having two spare batteries as it allows me to fly for up to an hour in total, which is plenty for me. Next up, I have two spare batteries for my X-T2 as well as a cleaning cloth for wiping down lenses and also the back screen on the camera. In the next pocket, I have some spare AA and AAA batteries, and I have a little container full of Eneloop rechargeable AA's too. In the large compartment, I have my CFast reader, as well as another cleaning cloth, a lens pen, and this circular polarizer from Hoya. The polarizer helps when you're shooting water or through glass, like on a plane or helicopter. It helps remove reflections, which seem to be a recurring issue for me when traveling, so I love having this with me at all times. I've also got this phone mount in case I want to capture some behind the scenes or a time lapse on my phone. This is the Manfrotto brand mount and it has two different places where you can attach the tripod.
In this compartment I've also got a hard case that holds some spare CF and SD cards just in case I need more storage. The last item in my bag is the spare battery for my 1DX Mark II. I found that two batteries is perfect as it allows me to shoot a full day of continuous shooting. So I do want to mention some more of the gear that I bring with me that doesn't actually go into my camera bag but will always go into my check baggage with my clothes and other items. The first one is the Joby Gorilla Pod, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. It's a great tool because you can literally put it anywhere. Being flexible, it can wrap around a tree, between rocks, it'll basically just go where you need it to go. I sometimes tuck it in the top of my rolly bag as well, um, if I want to carry it on so that I can shoot outside of the plane window. Next up is my underwater housing by Sea Frogs for the Fuji X-T2. This has a dome port on the front which is great for getting those half in, half out of the water shots as the port pushes the water level away from the camera so you can see the water line. So the X-T2 just slots in and what I love about this housing is you can control every single dial on the camera. Being able to switch between photo and video while you're in the water is amazing. You can even zoom in and out uh, with the 18-55 to lens giving you the ability to get a range of different shots in the water. So this is a recent purchase for me, but I'm really looking forward to getting plenty of photos and footage with this in the future. For my main tripod, I have this Benro carbon fiber travel tripod. This thing is light and also extends out to be around 180 centimeters tall, I believe, which is great. It also takes the same plate as the Gorillapod, which saves a lot of time when switching between the two. As I said, this doesn't fit in my roller bag, but I'll always have it in my checked bag. Last of all is my Glidecam HD2000. This has been my workhorse stabilizer for the past six years, and I doubt I'll ever get rid of this thing. I usually break it down into the three pieces when I travel just to save space. So I don't have a gimbal at the moment. I did have the crane, but I will be looking to get one in the future that can hold the 1DX Mark II. So guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. What's in my bag, my travel bag for 2018. As always, all the products listed in this video are in the description below if you wanna check out any of those details. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.